Yeah, he's Mike. He's the editor of UKColumn.org. Speaking of claims, if you go to Master B, NID posts the two screenshots, says this is an alternative news site I mentioned. These print screens are the members forum. And it's interesting because it brings up the Sea Sparrow argument on the second slide. Does it? Yeah. It's an, it's an old post which I've just replied to this morning because I remembered. The guy who posted the uh, that Flat Earth is nonsense. He's actually the editor, the director of the show. And is although that... they cover alternative news, like they point out how much, how many lies there are on the BBC, CNN, etc., they have got a closed mind on the nature of Earth. What's it say about the Sea Sparrow? I'm not looking at Master B. Well, it's I just used your um, argument, QE. Say again. I used from your Globe Terminator website. I just cut and paste it. Oh, okay. Yeah, what he what he has on the first screen, he's talking about uh, the guy that is artillery, aviators, sailors, officers, bridge builders take curvature into account. So he's using artillery with curvature. And then on the second slide, he posted your references to Sea Sparrow. I, I, that reminds me of something really funny. Back at, it was many years ago. Uh, flat Earth Math was on one of these Flat Earther channels. I think it was uh, John. Was it John Lebon? I can't remember wh which it was. However, this person that was interviewing Flat Earth Math had a range uh, officer in the wings, sitting back in the wings, like a military range officer that officers that run ranges in the military. And he had him sitting back in the wings and then he, he uh, it, but flat earth math didn't know. And then he started asking, uh, the host started asking flat earth math about, you know, uh, the Coriolis effect and how uh, people have to take into account um, uh, the effects of Coriolis and the range officer, military range officer comes on screen <laughs> and says, you're full of shit. <laughs> but it's nice. actually in the field manuals. It's, dis it's disinformation for the Soviets, I think, originally. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but it exposed flat earth. It shut him up. He, his face turned red because, I mean, this range officer, what they do is because sometimes you have uh rounds that fire off the range and if you're if, if you're by like a uh, local towns and stuff that's a problem <laughs> right so they have to go find these things so they have to take all the ballistics into account he said we never take the uh spinning earth into account to find those rounds that was it yeah. I would like to point out that that training that those men receive and I received as a, a artillery um uh, like that <laughs> i didn't read books to learn it it was all on the job like, yeah exactly sorry I, I, there's a bit of confusion here just paul is this back and forth is too small on my screen that i presented to read it on the fly is it an argument about the geometric horizon and the limitations it would impose with the sea sparrow uh sea to air and uh, air to air or whatever it is missiled or is it an argument about the coriolis deflection as a result of earth no turning? i just i just posted it separately as a proof Damn, uh, i have there. counted his other comments start again paul you got rumpus i have counted some of his comments but i just posted that as a proof separately but for what what was the argument is it in regards to coriolis effect or earth curve but it was just a proof of flat earth so it's in regards to Earth curve, then the limitation and the lack thereof when it comes to fire. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah, line of sight, yeah. Yeah, okay. It's just the, the the response that you got from QE was talking at cross purposes. So there's a couple of things I'm going to highlight if you can all bear with me. Number one, what Paul's done is gone to the globeterminator.com website and taken a chunk and posted it to who's the guy? You said it's the editor of. 
Yeah, he's Mike. He's the editor of UKColumn.org. Perfect. So the reason I'm highlighting that is because that's what that resource, the great effort by QE, has been put together for. And it's nice to hear it being utilised in that way. That's what it's for. So if you're in a tete-a-tete -tete with somebody about this particular subject matter, there's a good chance that there's the answer you're looking for at theglobeterminator.com that you can just lift and use. You don't have to even make any adjustments. Ball didn't. Cut and paste the entire lot. There you go. There it is. Check it out. You don't have to be concerned that it's been vetted. It's been done. So I just it's worth to a... that. Sorry, Nathan. It's worth reading what that Mike guy says. So let me read it since you can't read it. You can see all the mistakes. No, it isn't. This is a forum for those who challenge nonsense, wherever it comes from. It is extremely important that we challenge our own positions just as vigorously as the so-called official narratives. So far, so good. Flat Earth is... Flat Earth is... Wow, I'm getting that go. Flat Earth is dangerous bullocks. It's dangerous because it convinces people to doubt the very foundation on which all stand. It drives the idea that everything is a lie. It tries to convince people that even when evidence is placed in front of us, that we should doubt it. The fact is that every sailor, aviator, artillery officer, bridge builder takes curvature into account. The globe Earth model of the solar system predicts eclipses, tides, sunrises, and sunsets, planetary positions, and how fast I will hit the ground if wings of my aircraft fall off to a high degree of accuracy. No flat earther, and I mean not a single one, can, using their model, do the same. That's the degree of evidence required. Just my opinion. <laughs> But he's it's using our model to claim all that. Hold on. Poor guy. Hold on. He sounds scared. Hold on. John, go ahead first, please. He's using our model to claim that it's a globe. Like, it's just so infuriating. And he doesn't even realize it. And then he wants to call flat earth dangerous. It seems like heliocentrism is dangerous if you can take what he says. Okay, let's just start that one more time, John. What's the guy's name, Paul? Mike Robinson. Mike Robbins? Robinson. Mike Robinson. So, if you don't mind, John, address to Mike Robinson. Can you explain why his assertions that he thinks come from the, quote, globe model of the universe are actually a derivation of a flat Earth? Please. Well, Mike, um, just so you know, the elevation at angles are taken from a flat plane, and then they're applied in a celestial sphere model of a flat plane. And then you apply the Haversine formula to get your globe from that. You, your model you're talking about is a false dilemma because you're using two flat Earth models to claim one is true and one isn't, but you're still using a flat Earth. Uh, just one sec, just one sec, just one sec. Tenth, can you explain how the flat earth is being used, please? Whoever is on off mute, John included, Neil, John, both go on mute, please. Tenth, can you just explain how the flat earth is required as a prerequisite in order to move forward to model a globe with, please? Yeah, um, all just, the... Just address what you say to Mike Robinson, please. Okay, gotcha. Yes, Mike, if you look into uh, celestial navigation and nautical almanacs, you'll see that all the angles derive from the center of a presupposed globe. So that would mean the equatorial plane, which is synonymous with the celestial equator, which extends all the way to the imaginary celestial sphere. So the angles are not from a curved surface where the sailor with a sextant might be, but uh, from the center of a disk once you cut the earth in half. Then what happens is that is uh, projected to the celestial sphere, the inner concave, where it takes shape as a spherical triangle, which there is no such thing, and then projected back as uh, 
once said by the Haberstein formula so that that could be the surface that you're standing on when that is not even where the measurement came from. It came from a flat disk when you cut the center of the earth. So it's all hokey pokey. No, that's no, it's non sequitur fallacious because you. elevation angle measurement. Uh, hold on, stop, stop. Can you address this to Mike Robinson, please, Kiwi? Thank you. Yeah, Mike Robinson, that was that's fallacious and non sequitur because an elevation angle is a measurement, not a calculation. And a horizontal plane is prerequisite to acquire any and all elevation angles. Globe's dead. I think we covered it. I'll trim that out. I'll put his name on the top of it. It'll get addressed to him in a YouTube video. Unless anybody else has got they any comments? Anybody else want to remark on that? Yeah, I got some comments. Everyone hear that? So oh, I heard it all right. just said, Hold on a second. Relax. So everyone heard that. What they do, right, in their fairy tale books is they're calculating. They're not measuring anything. That's a very important point, by the way. All elevation angles are measurements, not calculations. It's non sequitur. If you say it's a calculation, it's non sequitur. It's not an elevation angle. Here. Yeah. I remember you trying to explain this to me about 18, no, it's probably longer than that. Now. I can't remember if it was pre or post Black Swan. No, it was, it was post Black Swan. So it's about a couple of years ago. Um, Conspiracy Cats came out with a video in regards to an observation at the Isle of, uh, no, at Blackpool of uh, a tower and some mountains and such. And he started describing the calculations of the elevation angle. And QE tried to explain to me then, although I didn't understand, that this isn't going to be calculated. This isn't going to be done with pixels. You can't do it from a photograph. That's not what an elevation angle measurement is. It's you standing with the tool measuring an angle. Not calculating it. Exactly. Non sequitur. I'm interested in the uh, in in the, I've been hearing it uh, that uh, all bridge construction takes uh, earth curve into consideration. Uh, do, do you have anything on that? No, it violates the celestial sphere model. You can't get an elevation angle measurement from a curved surface. You can't take it into account if it's a prerequisite that you have a horizontal baseline. That's not taking it into exactly. account. That's violating it. Precisely. There you go. What is, that, what is it? What is it that they that they imagine they are doing to to take into account the Earth's curve when building bridges? What is it they claim they're, who, who they're doing? Says, who says they're taking into? A, we need an engineer to come in here, and he needs to demonstrate what his job is and how he takes curvature into account while building a bridge. That's what we need. What Not did Brian, just what, somebody saying What did Brian it, Mullen do? Okay? What was Brian Mullen? Well, that, that guy Robin said it. He said it as well, in the, and I've been hearing it from others. Sure, but what, what QE is saying is this is a scattergun series of claims. So if you listen to what he's doing, because it's an email form and he can, is he scattergunning, in this case, Paul, with multiple claims that are unsubstantiated. So he's saying, all bridge makers take into account the curvature of the earth. There's nothing you can do about it. You don't have to like it. Ha ha ha. That, that's not evidencing his claim, is it? So what you would do if this was in rebuttal, if, if, if it was in debate, number one, he wouldn't get that far here. He wouldn't get to make 10 claims all at once. He'd get to make the first claim. Then he'd be demanded to provide evidence for that claim. Now, if his first claim was bridge builders take earth curve into account, no, they don't. They establish a horizontal plane That's when they're I, building it. That's what they actually yeah, do. I say they don't. Yeah. No, we say they don't because they don't. But we yeah. can show how they do their job and how it acquires elevation angle measurements. It uses levels. Not curves, levels. So that's what we can demonstrate in evidence. He's not doing that. He's just throwing it out as a baseless assertion. Okay. Uh, no, yeah, good, no, that's what, that's what I uh, assume. Well, it's a, 
at their side, especially bacon that had something you're to cite that, that, that I did not look at. We got the Oops. general gist, but you're breaking but no, up. No, thank you for the answer. No worries, no worries. No problem. In planar surveying, it's an easy claim to kill because planar surveying is is a plane, a curve. Sorry, what surveying? What's the name of the surveying yeah, technique? I was going to say that's painfully redundant. It is totally redundant. Planar surveying. That's what they'll be doing if they're building a bridge. Not globe earth surveying. Not anything globe related. Planar. Yeah, so he just has no clue what he's talking about and making claims out of his backside. Certainly seems that way. I'd be Mr. Robinson. You, you can clearly no, hear that by what he said. He has no idea. He was just, he probably looked some stuff up, found some cool stories and just posted it. He had no idea what the hell he was talking about. I, I've forgotten his Maybe name already. Maybe thought it was geodesic. What was his name again? Mike. Oh, Mike. Is it Mike Robinson? Something. Mike hey, Mike, you want to check it out how your, your, <laughs> the horizon is not a physical sphere edge, brother. Can I, can might I. Might want to go look into that. Can I uh, break down, as I read, I, I saw things that he's just projecting his own situation. Flat Earth is dangerous bollocks. It's dangerous because it convinces people to doubt the very foundation on which we all stand. Okay. Let's stop there. Hang the on, foundation on, on. on which we stand and measure and navigate is flat. Yes, but, but I want to tie what I just read to the previous introduction of this uh, blog or whatever it is. No, it isn't. This is a forum for those who challenge nonsense, wherever it comes from. It's extremely important that we challenge our own positions. Listen, Mike just as vigorously as the so-called official narratives. So he says something there that every rebel would love, every truther would just say, yeah, go for it, let's show those lies. Then he goes, flat earth is dangerous bollocks. It's dangerous because it convinces people to doubt the very foundation we all stand. Well, that's what he's doing in the first sentence. I was gonna say, isn't that every self self-contradictory? So we challenge things and question things. Flat earth's dangerous because it makes you challenge things and question them. That's what I heard. Exactly. All right. Now, now, now he That's goes to something. That's why the first thing I said was it, he sounded scared. That's why I said that. Because of that first, that was he, that was his first statement out the gate. Yeah, he's definitely scared. Yep. Okay. Now it goes to those crazy flat earthers who may have said this. It derives the idea that everything is a lie. Well, we don't say everything is a lie. That's a stereotyping. So let's just yep, break it down as you go. So that's a baseless assertion and stereotyping fallacy. Okay, next one. It tries to convince people that even when evidence is placed in front of us that we should doubt it. Well, we're placing elevation angle evidence. Why are you doubting? That's a reification fallacy and an argument from silence fallacy and a stereotyping fallacy. So <laughs> his starting position, it, what's it, flat earth? Does it, Flat Earth, have lips? Tenth. No. So it's a reification fallacy. Yeah, and stereotyping, as you said, because obviously we have to put to silence some things Flat Earthers say as well, when there's no evidence for it. Next. The fact is that every sailor, well, how does he know that? Aviator, Stereo stereotyping person, fallacy number two. Yeah, artillery officer, bridge builder takes curvature into account. So stereotyping fallacy number three, four, and five, and baseless assertion fallacy. Yeah, um, see, I could break this one here, very simple. Do they actually take curvature into account, or are they reading the books that says there is curvature to take uh, into uh, account? Hold on. You don't have to paraphrase his baseless assertion fallacy. You don't have to do that. Mike, you used a baseless assertion. You didn't evidence what you claimed. Ergo, a baseless assertion fallacy. Now, 10th man saying, well, do they? I'm not going to rephrase your question. Just point out that your argument's flawed because you didn't evidence it, and you won't, is 10th's point. But I don't need to point that out, and neither does 10th. 
because you've used a fallacy, a baseless assertion fallacy, and five stereotyping fallacies in one sentence. Okay, continue. The globe Earth model of the solar system predicts eclipses, tides, sunrises, and sunsets, planetary positions, and how fast I will hit the ground if the wings of my aircraft fall off to a high degree of accuracy. So I recall... Hold on, hold on. The, <laughs> Can you just read that last sentence again? Uh, and how fast I will hit the ground if the wings of my aircraft fall off to a high degree of accuracy. That's got nothing to do with Earth as a sphere and everything to do with relative density disequilibrium. Yeah, uh, one more thing. As I recall, the Babylonians knew about the eclipses and they uh, believed the Earth was flat. A prediction, I, a supposition, isn't following a pattern and then declaring what will happen next based on that pattern. That's what eclipses are. That's not predictive. That's like saying, I predict that one minute past 12 will come after 12 o'clock. Is that my? Is that what a prediction? No. Well, there's uh, recognizing cyclical patterns. Well, there's another problem too because the model he's talking about is derived from a flat plane celestial sphere model. I was coming so, to that next. You go ahead. Yeah. So he's he's getting ready to invoke the globe Earth heliocentric flying around the sun, but that was derived from a flat Earth celestial sphere model, which was taken from measurements of the flat plane we dwell atop. So, so your assertion of how it works in the model, Mike, is an assertion that's come from a derivation of a flat plane. That's called the celestial sphere model. Look it up. It's the origins of your globe claim that you also used a reification fallacy when you stated what the globe model does. We don't live on a model, Mike. Reification fallacy number two. You're Thank not standing you. on a model to claim that that's how it behaves in real world because models aren't what we're standing on. Another reification fallacy by Mike. Thank you. I was going to just, I was going to interrupt for a point of order. They don't have a model. They don't know what a model is. They Show me the globe earth model. Yeah, I was about to end that statement with exactly the same. Mike, if you would like to present us with the heliocentric model, please. We'd like to examine it for its uh, qualification for reification that you have employed. I, how accurate your reification fallacy is. It's still a reification fallacy. It doesn't matter what your model showed us, if you had one. But in seven years of being here, nobody's presented one, Mike, because there isn't one. A globe well, Earth he goes model. One well, he goes one step further and says at the last point, no flat earther, and I mean not a single one, can, using their model, do the same. That's the degree of evidence required. Stop, 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 stop. So reification fallacy number three for globe Earth and now flat Earth models. Stereotyping fallacy number six, because he's now stereotyped what all flat Earthers do. And further use of the sphere that's been taken from a celestial flat Earth model. Yeah, pretty pathetic. Keep going. Got any more? No, that's it. He says, just my opinion. <laughs> uh, but I you know do what I say about opinions, say. eh? Don't what? you, Mike? They're like assholes. Everybody's got one. Meanwhile, here on Flat Earth Debate, we have actual evidence to back when we say no. When they're building a bridge, they're using a planar method, not taking into account Earth's sphericity, and we can demonstrate this and evidence it. When, I, when he says... When he says it's, a, it's his opinion, that's subjective. So he's in a non sequitur category here because we're discussing the objective. Thanks. He's not. He's a liar yeah. in that respect. He's a self-delusionary or a liar. You're not offering your opinion when you stereotype six different categories of people and what they think, you complete idiot. That's not your opinion. That's an outrage, Mike. Don't tell me how... The surveyors do things and then tell me it's your opinion at the end because you're not you're just stereotype fallacy what people do when your opinion of what earth curve is taken into account by them it isn't your opinion it's six stereotyping fallacies what was your illustration about the clock at midnight can you go over that if i say that 
I've watched this clock continually and every single time it gets to midnight, it goes to one minute past 60 seconds later. So then I sit you in front of that clock at 11.59 and it strikes 12. And I say, I predict that in 60 seconds time, it's going to be one minute past 12. That's not a prediction. That's a recognition of patterns and a description of the pattern, as opposed to a prediction, which in science would be a supposition of cause yet to be validated. So when the ancients who believed they lived on the flat plane also knew that, uh, what does that prove? Isn't it a man-made device-based phenomenon that is being predicted when you go to time predictions, clocks or otherwise? No, because they're the stars, all based on convention, man-made. No, the stars are perfectly cyclical. Following the pattern of the stars in their cyclical nature is no different to watching a clock in its cyclical nature. It's a cycle. It's a pattern. It repeats. So when you just declare what that pattern is, that doesn't mean you've made a prediction. Well, not a scientific prediction. Next, because it's a pattern. Well, it's not a scientific prediction because you're not going to very manipulate it. You're just going to let time pass, and letting time pass is not very manipulating a naturally occurring phenomenon. Right, and that's why it's described that way. Because in scientific vernacular, prediction is part of the method that they're going to be hijacking when they describe their predictions and their cause and effect relationships without validating them with science. Or just baseless assertion your way through a whole bunch of stereotyping fallacies and claim that people who aren't you, just your opinion, know it's a bloody globe because they're measuring it said way. Oh, really? So they don't level out surfaces then when they're building bridges. They don't measure and use tools that establish level and horizontal. They don't do that. Yeah, they do. It's called planar surveying. Can I do a Mr. Sensible pun here? Sure. At best, it's secondhand information. It's not secondhand. He hasn't got it in the first hand. Where's the evidence no. in the first hand that the they clock. claim severity the... when measuring anything? He hasn't got first hand information for it to be secondhand as his opinion. It's just a stereotyping fallacy with baseless assertions attached. That was a high pun I, I had. I trying to give him a dog bone. No, it's the second hand of the clock. That's my pun. Okie dokie. You didn't get the dog phone part. Did you? I think it's even better that his opinion is contradicted by objective facts as well. Opinion, a.k.a. six stereotyping fallacies attached to baseless assertion fallacies. Yeah, the, the idea that planar surveying can take curvature into account is just so far beyond nonsense. I, I don't even know how to describe that. Well, the anti-flat Earth rebuttal is to say that we use a tangent plane. Therefore, we're taking our measurement from the centre of Earth and drawing out a horizontal baseline that covers a vast area of a given size that we would build on. So once we've taken a measurement that we assume is in reference to a calculation to the centre of Earth, we'll measure our flat plane and build on it. That's how the anti-flat earthers get around it and say, no, we're measuring off a tangent plane. No, no, that's how they deal with celestial navigation. When they're talking about planar surveying, they say the horizon is the tangent point instead of the point at your feet. So they, they dance between tangents, uh, whether they're talking about planar surveying or celestial. Uh, yeah, the an yeah, the anti-flat earthers didn't even know that the celestial navigators were going from uh, the center of the Earth. They didn't know that until 10th told them. So... <laughs> no, I, I no, wanna, no, no yeah, that's not books, necessarily true. All... Don't, hold on, don't stereotype them back. No, I had people telling me that it was coming in parallel almost immediately. Uh, John, uh, refractive curvature, John. Uh, Eratosthenes, uh, was, how did he get the shadow? Was that planar or... I mean, how does a shadow happen? He was using planar geometry to get the angle. Okay, so now the trick is that they took what he did and moved it to a presupposed center of a sphere that doesn't exist. Because it also says that he assumed the Earth was a sphere and sunlight came in parallel, and then he took a planar geometry shadow angle and said, well, I'll just move it to the center. That's all they're doing, but it's not happening. <laughs> right, it's on screen right now. 
the angle measurement to this star off the flat plane, that would be the grey area, has a vertex that we can't see because it's in the centre of the sphere Earth where you have to project your position and the angle measurement you take out to a concave map that's been taken from the plane you got the angles from. That's how this globe has come to pass. Well, the origin... The original angle measurement is taken from the celestial sphere model. That's why we've got this outside sphere wrapped around a non-existent measurement location in this diagram. The globe is a flat Earth model. 